A South Dakota power company's efforts to get customers using alternative energy sources to, quote, pay their fair share, has advocates of renewables saying it would end up darkening solar energy across the state. Black Hills Energy has requested a new tariff from the South Dakota Public Utilities Commission that would require homeowners and businesses with their own clean energy systems to pay the company for what they generate. In tonight's Cattleland News investigation, Angela Kennecke looks into the potential consequences of this controversial proposal on the future of solar power in the state. Spinach, arugula, there's spring turnips. And Jeremy Smith grows vegetables on Cycle Farm in Spearfish. A wind turbine was on the land when he bought the business, but he also installed solar panels on the greenhouse. We're trying to be kind of deliberate about the actions we're taking and the effect they have on the broader community and kind of the planet as a whole. The power that we don't use goes and it powers our neighbors. It costs Smith $8,000 for the solar panels, and he says it will take time and energy savings for him to recoup that expense. South Dakota's got pretty poor rates for kind of solar exchange just existing without this tariff coming, so uh, it's a, a pretty long buyback rate on the on the solar, I think we figured with these panels and doing the labor ourselves that it's a 16-year uh, payoff. The buy-all, sell-all tariff that Smith is referring to being proposed by Black Hills Energy means that any future solar or wind power customers would pay 100 percent of their electricity, even what they produce through their own systems, plus an additional $10 a month meter charge. Black Hills Energy would reimburse them at a much lower rate, two cents per kilowatt, for excess solar and wind energy production used on the grid. We want to keep rates low for all customers. Um, and as part of that, we believe that customers that incur costs on the system are the customers that, that should pay for those costs or the service that they receive. Black Hills Energy says even when someone has their own power system, the utility must still supply the infrastructure to the grid and make electricity available to those customers. Obviously, the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. So at a moment's notice, 24-7, 365, we have to have those lines available, safe and ready to provide their peak demand um, if their system isn't generating. And so that comes at a cost. If this tariff pass, any sort of renewable, small-scale renewable energy in South Dakota is dead, 100% dead. Jared Capps, Black Hills Company, Pangea Design, specializes in sustainability in building. In remote western South Dakota, Cappy and his... His projects have been featured on the Discovery Channel's program, Building Off the Grid. He's currently remodeling an 1887 farmhouse in Spearfish. And as part of that remodel, we're putting solar on the roof. So this is one of our residential products that would, projects that would be impacted if this tariff was allowed to go through. However, it's a bigger project in the middle of town that has CAP more concerned. Construction is supposed to get underway next week on a $2 million mixed-use commercial building. This is an $80,000 solar system going on this roof, and if this tariff is passed, we're not going to put that on the roof. Then we'd have to restart the permitting process and would actually halt the build. And one of the aspects that got our approval passed was that we were going to put solar on the roof because Spearfish as a city values renewable energy. Research scientist Rachel Headley plans to locate her consulting company in the new building. She also has solar power on her home and believes the proposed tariff could have a negative economic impact on the state. I think it will dissuade people from moving here. I think it will dissuade businesses from coming here. Does it punish those who want to have renewable in, in energy? Shouldn't the utility company be rewarding those who want to put in solar panels and wind power? And yeah. Yeah, I don't think anything in this punishes them or discourages them. I, you know, I think this is equitable for all customers. It, it, it reflects more closely what the value of the, uh, you know, the connection to the grid brings. In 2016, Nevada's Public Utilities Commission agreed to phase out incentives for homeowners who install rooftop solar panels after the state's largest energy company argued the same thing as Black Hills Energy, that when solar customers don't pay to maintain the grid, non-solar customers are stuck with the bill. The Solar Energy Industry Association estimated that more than 2,600 jobs were lost when the large solar companies stopped doing business in Nevada because of the change. A year and a half later, new legislation in Nevada modified the ruling and the solar companies returned.
Solar advocates say the same thing could happen in South Dakota with solar energy companies like GenPro in Rapid City, should the PUC approve the new tariff. I mean, there's entire companies in the, just in the northern Black Hills that would essentially be rendered useless if this was, you know, this is their business model is to sell small scale solar. While the tariff would currently only affect about 80 customers in the Black Hills, solar advocates say renewables are the way of the future and believe utilities are only trying to protect the monopolies. You know, right now it's still, uh, you know, a fairly minor percentage of the customer base, but um, it's still happening. Uh, and so really, as we look at this issue into the future, we believe now is the best time to address it. Black Hills Energy's request is making its way through the Public Utilities Commission process, which could result in some kind of agreement between parties needing approval by the PUC, or the case could be argued before the PUC. Public comment on the issue is being taken online. We've put a link for you to do that on this story on kevlevan.com.